The Witcher books and games, unlike many other fantasy properties, often nod at the audience and make statements about real life. One of the most popular theories amongst fans and gamers alike regards the country of Redania that some consider to be a direct satire on the country of Poland, where the books and the games originated from. Today I want to take a look at the most obvious clues supporting the theory and some against it. Here are 6 biggest clues that make us believe that Redania might be in fact Poland. The eagle has since time immemorial been a popular element of heraldry, often associated with courage and strength. Most of you probably think of the American bald eagle right now, but many other countries use that symbol as well, like for example Germany, Romania, Russia, and most importantly, Poland. The eagle of Redania is greatly similar to the emblem of Poland, as both are white on a red background and are wearing a golden crown. Such a color scheme seems intentional, even to the biggest opponents of the theory. One of the times you get to see the emblem involves a patriotic troll, which comes with another clue to support the theory, but it's more of a personal interpretation to be honest. Anyway, around the war-torn lands of Velen, we can meet a friendly singing troll who joined the Redanian army. Depicting a naive troll as a song-singing patriot seems like a joke aimed at the young Polish nationalists we hear about every once in a while when riots take place around national holidays. Do CD Projekt view young nationalists as stupid trolls? Well, you'll be the judge of that. My answer to that question is yes, and it's hilarious. Gauda Mater Polonia, which in Latin literally means Rejoice, O Mother Poland, was a popular medieval anthem which originated in the 13th century. Even though the anthem has been out of use for quite a while now, it can still be heard on several occasions, like for example events surrounding the start of a new semester at some universities. In the Hearts of Stone expansion, we can hear a Redanian edition of the anthem, called Gauda Mater Redania, from the lips of one of the soldiers. Even though Geralt only hears part of the said anthem, the lyrics, which just so happen to be in Latin, seem almost identical to the Polish counterpart. In the game, we hear... While in Gaudemater Polonia, the anthem starts... Gaudemater Polonia, prole fecunda nobili. The fact that we heard in Oxenford, an academic town, further supports the interpretation of the easter egg, suggesting that Redania might be in fact the Poland of the Witcher's Northern Kingdoms. Comparing Redania to Poland, we should also look at the world's geography. Here, the interpretation is much more complicated, as unlike the Song of Ice and Fire or Lord of the Rings, a map of the Witcher world was created much after the release of the books. The author of the saga once explained why that's the case. I've said it once and I'll say it again. There's no deliberate world creation in my books. When it comes to the anthology of the entire civilization, it's rudimentary, subservient to the plot and only the plot. True, later on when I began writing the book series, I had to form some crude geographical framework, including politics and economy. I had to be aware of what's in the north, what's in the south, and which way leads to the sea. But I did it only as far as the plot required it no more than it was necessary and essential to the story, not an inch more. My world is a pseudo-world, a mere background, a picture on a canvas moved by a reel, and it's justified. After all, the story in the books is about the fate of the characters, not about the fate of the world. The setting serves the plot, not the other way around. Yes, it's a kind of ontological construct, but it's subservient to the plot, not to its own fantastical, sometimes even outlandish ontology. Having heard all of that, we still can't ignore the suspicious geography of Redania and some of its locations for that matter. The country has access to the sea in the west, mountains to the east, and lowlands in the middle. Rotate that at 90 degrees, and you pretty much have contemporary Poland. Another thing that supports our theory is the Pontar River that can be compared to the Polish Vistula River. Even though Pontar was a natural border between Temeria and Redania, while Vistula flows through the heart of the land, Pontar's significance seems to resemble that of Vistula. Back in the days of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, Vistula played an important role in the economy, and same goes for Pontar. In the game world, the Pontar River is used to flow crops from the mainland to the merchant city of Novigrad, from where the goods are shipped to the rest of the continent, making Redania the so-called breadbasket of the north. 
The same term was once used to describe the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth back in its glory days. And let's take a look at the famous Novigrad itself, one of the biggest cities of the Witcher universe. Novigrad is an independent city, despite being part of Redania, just like the Polish Gdańsk, or as it once was, the Free City of Danzig. Long after the time of the Commonwealth, Danzig maintained its significance as a center of culture and commerce, and its location in the Gdańsk Bay seemed to play a part in putting Novigrad in the strategically convenient Pontar Delta. And speaking of Gdańsk itself, one of its sightseeing spots is the historical crane, Der Kranor, which just so happens to be visible in Novigrad in an almost exact copy. Coincidence? I think not. While many locations in the Wild Hunt have German, French or Nordic sounding names, there are also a lot of towns that sound as Polish as it gets in the original language version. One of the places stands out the most, the village of Brunwick, or Bronowitz in the original, where Geralt attends a certain wedding. Bronowitz is in actuality Bronowice, a district of Krakow, which was once a neighboring village. Why would the developers focus on that particular location? Well, it all boils down to the drama called The Wedding, written by a prolific Polish playwright and poet Stanisław Wyspiański. The Wedding itself was based on the wedding of one of Wyspiański's peers, and amongst other things, depicted the divide between the Polish intelligentsia and peasants in the wake of two failed uprisings against the patricians of Poland, a time in history when the Polish country disappeared from the map of Europe. And isn't disappearing from the map the threat Redania is facing right now? Another clue to consider while trying to prove the theory is the Redanian society. While it's not emphasized in the games enough, as much as it was in the novels, the gentry in Redania were much more numerous than in other kingdoms. And even though there were visible disparities between the gentry in Poland, even the poorest noblemen were bound and protected by the same laws as the most affluent magnates. That, as you may have already realized, resulted in many of the gentry thinking high of themselves and abusing the power their status granted them. The gentry at some point started to idealize their role in the society by the means of the ethnocultural concept of Sarmatism. A typical Sarmatian was a saber-wielding, proud patriot who often indulged in feasts and drinking. Here, once again, we have to take a peek at the Hearts of Stone expansion and the character of Olgierd and his merry bunch of misfits. Even though we can perceive them as nothing more than decadent bandits, they are in fact part of the gentry, while Olgierd himself, apart from the immortality and personal demons, has all the mannerism and fashion choices of a textbook example of a Polish Sarmatian. And if that was enough to persuade you, in the Polish version of the game, Olgierd and his dead brothers share the names with some members of the Polish Gediminowicz dynasty. Feel free to google that. Some may consider it a counter-argument, but the inclusion of the Cult of the Eternal Fire seems like an obvious nod at the Catholicism in Poland. While Poland itself was by many called a country without pyres at some point, due to its tolerant nature and lack of religious persecution on the scale of, let's say, the French Reformation, there were still some burnings of present heretics nevertheless. Throughout history, religion had a great impact on Poland's culture and major historical events, and seeing how big is the cult's influence on King Radovid, it's hard not to interpret it as a direct criticism of the current influence of the church on Poland's politics. The books themselves also had a lot of anti-religious sentiment next to anti-war and anti-discrimination messages, even if the old father of the franchise claims otherwise. I have my own rather critical opinion on what is currently going on in Poland, but I didn't come here to make statements on that. Not that my opinion would matter anyway. Sapkowski himself claims that the books aren't supposed to have a political message, but the creation of the characters and the negative impact of religion speak for themselves, even if it was unintentional. Here lies the heart of the problem with that theory. The world was created by Sapkowski, but after that, CD Projekt Red carried the torch. They expanded upon it with their own interpretation and their own ideas. And while Sapkowski probably didn't intend to give Redania much meaning, and it wasn't featured as prominently as other nationalities in the saga, the game developer's imagination influenced and forever changed how we view and interpret the Witcher world. And with that being the case, it's hard to say for a fact if certain locations or groups have real-life counterparts. Additionally, even though the Redania is Poland theory has a lot of ground, there are many arguments against it. For example, 
Radovid doesn't resemble any Polish ruler that was, and Temuria itself also has a lot of characteristics of Poland, shaking the foundations of our theory. To sum up, maybe it's just that, a theory, nothing more, a series of jokes and both incidental and intentional nods at the audience that are supposed to put a smile on the faces of both games and book fans that connect the dots and speculate what the creators had in mind. Thanks for watching and see you around.